Hey guys, how's it going? LA here. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi 3. Now, I'm installing Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi in order to create a uh, NOS solution for my home environment. Uh, Open Media Vault uh, is a distro Linux that's uh, geared towards creating a uh, NOS, which is a network attached storage device. And I'll be using uh, Raspberry Pi because it is small, has a small footprint, uh, doesn't consume a lot of power, and it's kind of nifty. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, but before we do, there's a few things that you'll need in order to uh, follow along. Uh, of course, you'll need a uh, storage device. I'm using a external hard drive, about four terabytes in size. Uh, you'll need to have Open Media Vault. Uh, an ISO of Open Media Vault. Now you can get that by going to openmediavault.org and clicking on the download link here and clicking on the link that says images can be found here. Now since we're installing this on a Raspberry Pi uh, you'll want to scroll down and find Raspberry Pi images and then click on the download latest version. I already have the latest version here and so I'm going to go ahead and continue. So the next thing that we'll need is Rufus. Uh, Rufus is an application that allows us to create a bootable USB drive or bootable devices. Now since uh, the Raspberry Pi uses micro SD cards, uh, we'll be able to create a bootable uh, micro SD card using Rufus. Uh, you can get Rufus by going to rufus.akeo.ie or if you just simply Google Rufus, it should be on the first page of the Google results. Now, once you're on the Rufus website, if you scroll down to the downloads area, you'll see the Rufus 2.18 portable download. That's the version that I'm using. It's quick, painless. There's not really much of an install needed. You'll also need 7-zip. You can get 7-zip by going to 7-zip.org and downloading either the 64-bit or the 32-bit version for uh, Windows. Now since I have all three of those things, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, I want to go ahead and extract the uh, image from this uh, compressed file. So the quickest way to do that is to right-click on the uh, compressed file, hover over 7-zip, and then click on Extract here. Now it's going to go ahead and go through the process of extracting the file. It shouldn't take too long, but the file should be uh, relatively uh, large for its for an ISO. All right, so as you can see here, the file is about four. Uh, gigs and so this is the image file that we'll be using now the next step is to uh, load our micro SD card in I have my micro SD card loaded and I'm gonna go ahead and click on Rufus now this is your first time opening up Rufus you'll get a little pop-up asking for updates I'm just going to go ahead and click on yes. And we have Rufus up and loaded. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to verify that the device that's loaded here is, in fact, your micro SD card. Uh, you wouldn't want to load any other devices or mistakenly have any other devices uh, here because uh, once the process starts, the drive is going to get uh, wiped and erased. So uh, just make sure uh, that the uh, micro SD card here is loaded in the device section. Uh, as far as partition scheme, uh, make sure that the MBR partition scheme for BIOS or UEFI is selected. The file format we'll want to leave at the default FAT32. Uh, Raspberry Pi uses FAT32 as its file system, so let's uh, not check any of the other ones and only use FAT32. Uh, the cluster size we can leave as default. 
uh, the volume label you can leave that uh, the same um, for this tutorial I'm gonna go ahead and change it to open media vault for create a bootable disk we want to have that checked and uh, for the uh, free DOS uh, section we want to change this to DD image all right so now we're ready to load our image uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little CD icon and navigate to where my image is located and the image is uh, loaded and it's ready to go so once you've double checked and verified the device is correct and everything else is checked go ahead and click on start now it's going to let you know that uh, you're about to wipe all the data on that micro SD card so go ahead and click on OK and for me it's letting me know that there's multiple partitions set it might let you know as well if you have a few partitions there but uh, it's basically letting you know that everything on that drive will be erased and if you're okay with that go ahead and click on OK alright so it was able to create the bootable drive I'm gonna go ahead and click on close and I'm gonna navigate to my computer and locate the drive so the drive here is G I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and eject it so that it's properly ejected. Now from this point I'm going to go ahead and load it onto my Raspberry Pi and continue with the tutorial. Alright so I have my Raspberry Pi 3 here. Um, on the back I have the uh, SD card, the micro SD card plugged in. I yanked that out of my PC and went ahead and plugged it into the uh, Raspberry Pi. I have it connected via Ethernet cable to my Cisco switch. Now, the Raspberry Pi 3 comes with the Wi-Fi integration, so you actually don't need to have an Ethernet cable. Uh, however, I'm just going to run with it for today. Uh, but you, it makes it a great candidate for a wireless uh, storage solution. Um, I have a Bluetooth adapter plugged in here for my uh, keyboard and mouse, and I also have the... Uh, HDMI cable here plugged in for my monitor. Um, now the storage solution that I'm going to be going with is actually a Western Digital Elements uh, 4 terabyte portable hard disk drive so it'll give me a decent amount of storage space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in and plug in the power adapter that's right over there and we can go ahead and continue with the rest of the video. Alright so I'm booting up the Raspberry Pi with the uh, open media vault loading and as you can see it's going through its uh, loading configuration all right and so this is essentially it uh, as far as uh, the things that you need to do on the Raspberry Pi itself once you have the micro SD card loaded into it. It's going to go through its configuration. It's going to briefly ask you for a username and password. Uh, but uh, basically, it works on its own uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Now, the rest of the configuration, uh, as we'll uh, continue, will be done through the uh, web interface. So it lists that I have an IP address 192.168.0.168. Keep that in mind because that's the IP address that we will be using uh, to log into the web control panel. All right, so it seems like the services has ran its course. After the second reboot, we're left with this screen that asks us to log in. Now, we don't necessarily have to log in here because, again, um, there's not much here to do other than to load it onto the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's letting us know that the default password for the web console is admin or excuse me the default username is admin and the password is open media vault so when we log into the uh, web interface console we will use those credentials to uh, continue on all right guys so we have a raspberry pi loaded with open media vault 
and it's sitting on the side here uh, it's still running I'm on another computer and I'm gonna go ahead and log into the web media console to uh, do some configurations to set up a uh, share drive for my home network now if you remember uh, during the configuration on our Raspberry Pi we were given an IP address we want to use that IP address to access uh, the web console so I'm gonna go ahead and type the IP address here and I'm gonna hit enter so we're presented with the open media vault uh, web interface I'm gonna go ahead and select the language now the username is going to be admin and the password is going to be open media vault alright so we're now at the home page for our open media vault uh, on this page here you have a few dashboard options you can add additional dashboards by clicking the add button uh, on the left side of the screen you'll see that we have a wide variety of configuration uh, options one of the first things that we'll want to do though is we'll want to check our physical disk so if you, under storage if you click on physical disk you'll see that there are disks attached to the uh, open media vault to your raspberry pi now i have my four terabyte western digital attached here and this is what I'm going to be focused on now if you click on your device you'll see that you have the option to edit uh, there's options here to adjust the power management as well as a few other options you can scan for additional devices if you've attached a device to your Raspberry Pi such as a another uh, external hard drive if you click on scan it will make an attempt to discover that device uh, what we want to click on though is we want to click on wipe wipe is going to uh, erase any uh, settings on the external drive it's going to uh, essentially format it so that it can be recognized throughout open media vault so I'm going to go ahead and click on wipe and it's gonna ask us if we wanna if we wanna really uh, wipe our drive now keep in mind this process might take some time depending on the uh, size of your uh, media device it's gonna give us options for a secure or quick wipe uh, the secure wipe will take a bit longer the quick, the quick wipe is going to uh, take some time however uh, it's not going to take as long as a secure wipe so I'm going to go ahead and click on quick and I'm going to let that load alright so now that that process is complete we want to create a file system for our hard drive so we're going to click on file systems located under storage and we're going to click on create We're going to locate the device that uh, we had just got through wiping and we're going to label that device. I'm going to label mine's WD and we're going to leave the file system uh, set to the default setting. Now this process also takes a bit of time so bear that in mind when you're going through this. Uh, as soon as we click on OK we'll be giving a warning letting us know that uh, it's going to format the drive and that this will also take as I said some time for it to uh, go through the process once you're okay with that go ahead and click on yes Alright guys, so after the completion of the file system, 
uh, you'll see that the file system is here the next step is to mount it so if you click on the little if you click on the file system then you click on the mount button it's gonna let you know that changes have been made and we're gonna go ahead and click on apply and as you can see the status is now online and the mounted status says yes so now we want to scroll down and we want to change a few service settings here we we'll first want to click on FTP and we want to enable FTP and save and apply we also want to enable SMB CIFS we're going to click on enable and save and we're going to hit apply so we're going to go to SMB CIFS and we're going to click on shares and now we want to add the share folder that we just created so since I would like to create a easy access folder I'm going to go ahead and click on guest allowed I'm going to leave the rest of the settings as their default settings and I'm going to click on save now we can hit apply and yes and again you can always go back and click on your share folder setting uh, click on edit and have access to additional settings for further modifications so now that we're done here I want to go ahead and map the share drive that we just created uh, we can do that by simply clicking on the file explorer icon here and I'm going to access my computer or this PC now there's an option here that will allow me to map network drive I'm going to go ahead and click on map network drive and we're just going to call it the Z drive for right now so I want to go ahead and type in uh, two backslashes just like the example that's shown here and we're going to type in our server address which was 192.168.0.168 .168. and we're going to type in the name of the share which I call it share so we're going to hit finish and as you can see here we have a network location uh, accessible uh, called share drive and if we double click and open this up we have uh, access to a network share all right guys so this concludes the uh, tutorial I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment and thank you for watching my video